All right, so part four of the uh, Celestron CPC 1100 HD telescope overview. Um, two things that I did forget to mention last video. I told you I'd forget something. Um, the uh, dust cover. This, this is probably trivial to some people, but I think it's kind of a neat feature. Uh, most telescopes have dust covers that just snap on. This one actually rotates and locks in place, so it will not fall off at, on accident. Uh, in this case, I think that's a good idea because uh, you have that real pretty corrector plate right behind it. And uh, you don't want anything to happen to it, so it's nice that they uh, actually made it where it locks into place. Uh, second thing, I did find a use for this uh, this uh, two and a qu or one and a quarter inch uh, visual back. Um, if I'm going to be doing just a night of planetary imaging, then I can definitely use it for my next image five. So, there we go. I can use it after all. Looks pretty snazzy, I think. Alright, so I got it powered up. Then there's the light, the power light. Like I said, it's not very bright at all. It's pretty dim. Uh, so I don't think that'll be a bother for most people. Although, the light on the power cord, <laughs> well, yeah, it's pretty bright. So you might just want to turn that facing down. Or maybe cover it up with some uh, black electrical tape. We're all powered up, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and just slew it around a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, the first slew is going to be on the the highest tracking rate, which is 9. Yes, it is quite loud, but we can change that. Just press motor speed, and then a number one through nine and that corresponds to the uh, the slew speed. So we'll do five, mid range, and now we're moving real slow. Try seven next. There you go. Too bad I can't pick up this really well. I'd like to show the features of the hand control. Maybe I'll get my battery camera out at a later date and go through that with you. But there we go. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a first light video coming up soon. Actually, I've already taken it out once tonight um, just for a, a quick test run. Um, I can definitely tell you it works as advertised. It's really, truly amazing. But um, I'll give you some updates on that. And plus, uh, we'll take it out into the field and we'll, we'll use it, put it through its paces. and. You guys can see uh, how to go through the whole alignment procedures and all that. And I still have to uh, learn them myself. That new skyline feature, I've never uh, used a telescope with the skyline before, so we'll see how that goes. I can definitely tell you it, it tracks really well. Um, as long as your initial alignment is nice and accurate, you put those stars dead center. Uh, when you send it to something, an object, um, it will put that object right uh, smack dab middle in the, in the field of view, so it's very accurate. I'm curious to see how well it will track uh, for astrophotography. Um, right now, for, I can use it for planetary. Uh, take uh, quick 30 second clips. Uh, the whole reason why it needs to be on an equatorial mount for um, long exposure astrophotography is because unlike a um, 
equatorial mount that tracks in one axis of motion, this tracks in two. Uh, basically that causes what's called field rotation in your images. Um, it'll appear as if all the stars in the field of view are rotating around the center. And uh, that's no good for um, long exposure. Um, we can rectify this by putting a equatorial wedge on here. Basically the wedge will mount between the uh, base of the fork mount and the top of the tripod and it will pretty much set the, uh, the, the fork mount on an incline to match the latitude where you are to face it toward uh, Polaris and no celestial pole. That way whenever you send it to a go-to and uh, you're tracking an object just like the uh, equatorial mount now we'll be only uh, tracking in uh, one axis of motion and that'll take care of the, uh, the field rotation problem. Now if you're imaging with the FASTAR system you know at F2 you can actually image with just the, uh, the alt as mount not worry about a uh, equatorial wedge and the reason why we can get away with that is because like I said at F2 you're going to be imaging a lot faster than you would be at F10. Um, but for now I'll probably just be doing uh, solar system imaging. I did some preliminary testing on Jupiter and it looks pretty darn good. Um, I'll probably be doing some more afocal uh, astrophotography, just short exposure, no more than 30 seconds. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But, so stay tuned. Uh, first light report's coming. And then as soon as I get my uh, USB adapter in, we'll be doing a uh, next remote uh, software demonstration and see how that works. Well, thank you for watching and clear skies.